We want to take a look at what's happening outside the U.S. stock market for just a second, starting with crude oil and commodities, because Larry Shover's with us. He's the chief investment officer of SFG Alternatives. Larry, this morning, we saw the commodity space just as a whole in the red. Now it's a little bit more mixed. Uh, what's been happening here throughout the trading session? Well, I think uh, with oil specifically, it continues to be in this three-way tug of war of sanctions, politics, and tariffs, and it just keeps the market up. It's up uh, 10 and a half percent for the year, up over 1% in the last, almost 2% in the last five days. And, yep. uh, I, still, I still maintain with uh, the oil prices that the capital flows into the market are very, very good. Uh, OPEC is a positive influence right now on the price, especially with Brent, um, and it's priced to perfection. Just like I said last week, I mean, all it's going to take is uh, some credible bad news, and, and that bad news could be the form of uh, a shale surprise. It's really not bad news per se, but sure. I think it could send oil back running. Um, but right now, it just seems like there's no end in sight. You know, Larry, it's a few items here that uh, kept coming up the past real month as oil remained resilient, kept hearing that, hey, well, the demand is going to be there no matter what's pumped out. And I was a little bit skeptical about it. But then we see the market coming back for stocks, companies able to navigate higher input prices on the earnings side. And even though we get higher estimates from EIA uh, for crude, we then get a report from the IMF that says, hey, things are going to chug along at that 3% rate in the U.S. that we expected. Is that indeed as simple as it is? I think so. I mean, sometimes like answers don't have to be so complex as you, as you <laughs> would agree. Um, it really boils down to being priced to perfection. Also demand. You know, I never thought that demand could repeat itself from what we saw in the second half of 2017. It was unprecedented. I hate to use that word because everything's always unprecedented in the market but that demand continues to be sturdy, even in products, even in jet fuel and diesel and distillates, it's pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, but I still maintain that the price will be lower at the end of the year than it is today. It's hard to be short, but uh, I wanna be honest and transparent about it all. All right, so looking at potentially uh, a high being reached here, Larry, uh, do, we, do you have any thoughts on where that might be? Or is it just until we get some kind of clear uh, input on, on uh, a read for demand, I guess, whether or not it can sustain 125,000 more barrels a day? Yeah, well, I think that's the point. Um, it, for years, it was all about supply, and uh, people just kept scratching their head on why oil would go down. And now it's really more on demand, and da demand is uh, overwhelming consensus, and it's continued to be sturdy. So um, I don't, I mean, that's, that's actually a backward looking, uh, you know, uh, thing to look at, but yeah. it continues to be so. It's not crunchy, it's really been good and uh, supportive. So, but on the other hand, I don't think it would take much for that to change and change uh, quite dramatically. All right, let's shift gears here, Larry, because as crude is coming up, stock's coming up, the VIX, as we've been talking about all day, is getting back to some levels we haven't seen in the better part of two months. We did below 15, Larry, are you buying it? Uh, not quite yet, but I do think, um, you know, any lower than that, getting down to the 12 or 13 range, of course, um, I would. And the reason why I'm skeptical is that when I look at um, the other asset class volatility, the FX vol, credit vol, interest rate vol, they're really, they haven't moved. Yep. So it's really been more a function of the equity market. And um, I think we spend so much time on broadcast news talking about the VIX and we have to realize that FX has been muted for a very long time through tariffs, through trade wars, through all kinds of things. So to me, that's very telling. And um, I, I'd wait a little while before buying the VIX. I, I'm with you, Larry, because we were just talking about this, uh, looking across those, those assets and looking even across just equity markets around the world. Nothing has been on par with the VIX in terms of how abnormal the moves have been. It, has that been the signal that eventually stocks were going to make their way back? I think so. I mean, let's keep in mind, we've been fighting a slew of cross currents in the market since January. Some yeah. good, some bad, and most of them won't go away anytime soon. But we have to keep in mind that the fundamental investment landscape is remains pretty supportive. Sure. I mean, have to remember that growth is, is yeah, it's, it's stalled, but it's not 
all, it's not universal. Inflation is there, but it's not runaway. Monetary policy is still accommodative. And let's not worry about fears of an inverted yield curve. I mean, good grief. Real policy uh, rates right now are negative 60 basis points. So it's not mm. anything to worry about. We have capital return. We have good earnings. And relative to government bonds, I wouldn't worry until the 10 year yield gets to three and a half percent and inflation's over two percent before we have any sort of meaningful correction in the stock market. And that's not happening. All right. Anytime there we, soon. There we go. The raging Larry Shover. I got to end it there, Larry, because <laughs> uh, it's a good place to stop it on. Larry Shover, he's the chief investment officer, SFG Alternatives. Maybe don't get all worried until we get to that three and a half. And we're still a good bit of the ways from there as yields come in just a bit right at two eight.